-hmm. So one in Arabic, it's mean the hard rock. Oh. Yeah. Because the whole city around, it's like a big quarry for the granite stones and the basalt stone. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And they have like 13 major quarries for the granite. Okay. Used to be all in use in the old days before. And the other stellar views, except that one, they did close it to me um, to be a monument protected area because one piece of rock that should be the biggest obelisk they ever made but after a few months of work it's cracked in the middle mm. so I think you have seen the obelisks in Luxor who are standing in Karnak or Luxor temple it's just one piece mm -hmm. but with this mm -hmm. crack yeah the percentage of to be broken it's really high that's why they decide to lift it as it is mm. and because of this the government they consider this um, a historical location oh, okay. but how they did cut it we have seen it it's big mm -hmm. but Ashraf how they did cut it even mm -hmm. how they stand it up um, yes that's what I think it's easy magic <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually they first start to cut it by a very good technique they have some movies uh, they even show one of them in the National Geographic when they are speaking about how they start to meet little holes around of it with small bowls of stones they use it as hammers oh. to make holes then they start to using the dry wood they burn it and when the stone is getting hot oh. then they start to using water on with this way or two different affection make cracks and with these cracks they can able to cut it but this for me it seems like wow story mm -hmm. you know because it works but it's very hard to control the crack where it goes oh. yeah but those people same like they have shields they have swords or they're using metals they also have tools yeah and they're using big bands with the real hammers and they hammer with this many men standing on one line and they hammer it then using other bigger bins they hammer it when they found kind of crack happened then they change the tools to make this crack wider they keep goes down and they keep hammering when the fishing finish cutting from each side then they start to chisel it from down when they finish that it's ready to be taken out of the quarry and sure in different places for example there can you see these little holes yeah. to the side yeah. it seems like on one line and it's more clear over there mm -hmm. oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's how they hammer it they have to be working on one line and that evidence of tools we will see more while we are up there all right y'all this view isn't that beautiful? We're traveling on a little boat. <laughs> I gotta get him, gotta get him.
goddess Isis, she is the goddess of motherhood and love. And by the way, she is a very special goddess. Because a lot of people, they came to worship her, not only because she is the goddess of love, they have many other gods, they represent love gods. But she is the only one that represents the goddess of motherhood. Even the other kingdom, like we have another kingdom, the Nubian kingdom in the south. The Nubian mother used to come to here because the Buddhist, the four used to be not really far. Both they are come to worship the goddess Isis in her temple. And that's the reason why we are doing the tour. I'll show you the goddess Isis looks like a Nubian lady. And that's the first and the last happened in this temple, not anywhere else. All the time you can see the goddess Isis with wings or feathers comes out of her arms. Or like a lady, as we have several places and here in these walls as well. But sure, they show with her with the crown of feathers, you know, and the wonderful shape of the African horses. The temple of the goddess was built first during the Theros era, but because it's island, many times the flood level used to cover a big part of it. Yeah, when it's over, flood. that's why it's been collapsed many times. And then during the Greek Roman era, they reconstructed the temple once again. So now this is a Greek Roman temple, which is after 257 BC, roughly. I would like to show you this temple, how it was looks like before. That's exactly how it was looks like. Old colors, old details. They have a great walls around of it to protect it. People have gates and have different stairs to come with their boots to her place. The court, what we are in. Here, this is the courtyard. Every temple we did visit, the courtyard, it actually comes to be second right after the island. Mm -hmm. But here the whole island dedicated for the goddess. So no need to make it limited. They can have it bigger. Especially her festival, it's big. Everyone come to worship the goddess. Everyone come to join her in her festival. Here, while they are still working to decorate it, but this temple wasn't exactly here. It's not exactly here on this island. The island, what they called it, Fila. It's a wrong pronunciation for the name. The name originally, it's Philos. In the, the ancient Egyptian, they called it Per Isat, which is the house of the goddess Isis. But then the Greeks, they call it Philos. What is Philos? It's mean love. It's mean good friendship. Yeah. And the name is popular in different places. Even in US, Philadelphia, it's come from Philos. Feel it. It's come from Philos. Yeah. Several places, it's got the same name like that, but different pronunciation. Yeah. And during the time right after they built the old dam and the level of the water raises up here, start to be really high, the temple. And instead of to be in some season underwater, it was whole time underwater. To come and visit this temple, you can do it by one way. This way. Wow. See, the water level is very high almost tell the crowns and that way, that way it looks dark yes yeah. because of the silt and water yeah and the car has been gone because of this also and you can see the boots over here that is the way how you can visit the temple that's why when they decide to save the temple in the area of the high dam they decide first to save this and that was a cooperation between egypt and holland the dutch so they found this to build a water lock around of it, that would be very costly. So instead of that, moving the temple, they have several islands. They can use it. It's higher and rocky islands, so 
would be like a good base for it. So they move it almost like three, uh, how much is 900 feet almost or something like that because it's 600 meters. So they move it from there, the Fila Island to this island which is higher called Ejelica. And how do they how do you move? Oh, yes. It's crazy. They dead. 237 piece, thousand pieces of stones being moved from there to here. How? Let I tell you. First, they came and they start to make a big line from up the top till the bottom to match the stones. Then they start to write the alphabet and numbers in each one of those stones. Okay? Then, when they done that for the whole temple, they made kind of iron and wooden water lock around of it. Then they start to bring sand. When they put the sand into the temple location, the water flows out and the rest of water being absorbed by sand. So the whole thing start to be like mountain sand. They start to do digging and they divide the stones, move it from there to here. Now, piece by piece. And because it's around the whole temple is sand, so it's safe. And they start to move it piece by piece. 237,000 pieces be moved from there to here. Then they start to collect it again, depend on the alphabet and number what they did use it before. You know all this work? That's right. Yeah. How many years it's need? How many? 20. 45. Uh -huh. Damn. They got a very good challenge. Wow. They did it only five. 19. 78 till 1982. Yeah, they collect the temple once again and it's standing here. Almost is 85% similar as it was in the original location. What to the first side face? Her face looks very serious, right? Try to follow the face. She's smiling. Yeah. Mm. She's showing smile. So it means idea of the animation. It means like animation carving. And that is a great art because that is carving, art and mathematics. All of them together to show the face like this. It seems like the goddess welcoming the people who come to the temple. Yeah. And that is wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. He's wearing hats, right? To use it for yourself. <laughs> is white and then start to be tiny the two banks and here is the delta by the way the delta used to be about five branches taking this shape before now it's only two but before it used to be five branches so the whole thing <coughs> the whole thing is the river nile here the doctor he is one of the travelers and the scribes he said egypt is the gift of nile no nile no Egypt. Yeah. So, he, this is the source, the key of life is the Reverend Nile. By the way, a lot of people they speak as the Reverend Nile have a god. No, actually. The Reverend Nile, the Egyptian in the old days, he did believe he is a god himself. I think so. That's how it is. Also, they said before, if you drink from the Nile, you will be back to Egypt. But nowadays, if you drink from the Nile, <laughs> All right, y'all. Getting some footage. Some good footage y'all want to see. Good stuff. Good stuff. Look at all this. Hi. Come along on a ride. Fantastic voyage. Ride, ride, Wood King Kofi. I'm gonna take you all around the world. Take you back to the motherland. Ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet, y'all. This is where we at, man. This is where we at. This is what we do. Beautiful. All right. 
Nubian Sedan Brothers, yay! Peace, man. Blessings. Blessings, blessings. Yes, yes. <laughs> Real African right here. Real African. <laughs> There's a Campbell. All right, y'all. We in the local village. About to see some natives. They started to run, they started mm -hmm. using old boxes, they fell up in between, they built the houses as you see it here around. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I tried to wear a mask because I believe this dust here is too big for you. There you go. Mm-hmm. Oh, like barbecuing? I know. Actually, the dogs is not eating. He's just biting. Ta! <laughs> the easy thing is, is crocodiles when they go to the house. Oh. Crocodiles. <laughs> 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 Arba. 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 Hamsa. 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 Seta. Seta. Saba. Saba. Tamaria. Tadamia. Seta. Seta. Saba. Saba. Tamaria. Tabnea. Kesa. Kesa. Ashara. Asha. Kesa. Kesa. Ashara. Ashara. Seta. Seta. Saba. Saba. Yes, sir. Asha. Asha. Yes, yes. Okay. In Indian, okay? In Nubian. Where? 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 Owe. Owe. Toski. Toski. Where Owe Toski? Where Owe Toski? Kemis. Kemis. Dish. Kish. Kemis dish. Kesh gish. Gorish. Gorish. Kolot. Kolo. Idu. Idu. Gorish kol. Idu. Gorish kol. Kolo. Idu. Isko. Isko. Deme. Deme. Isko. Deme. Isko. Deme. Damn. That's what I forgot. Where? Where? Inside the temple, his wife Ramsey II Nefertari is getting all these hieroglyphics, aka Metu Netzer, so y'all can see. Yes, that's the shot right there. Everybody should know warrior style.
doing good, brother. All right, y'all, we get Ramsey the second temple. Look how his temple shape. All these big old massive statues. Crazy, huh? How they did this temple. Let's walk around here. See what's going on. I'm gonna get shots. I'm gonna get shots for y'all. Look at this, y'all. Yeah. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. We're back. Saqqara. We're here. The first pyramid built for King Dozier. And it was designed by M. Hotel. So we're here. Get it on like Ducky Clone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Our tour guide. <laughs> so there you go right there. A good view of it. in Egypt in ancient time, as Egypt was divided into 40 districts, 20 in the north, 20 in the south. Each one is symbolized by a column here. The column, it takes the papyrus stem and was built in layers, as you see, layers of stone above each other to make one papyrus column. We believe it had a capital at the top of it, also papyrus flower or lotus flower. The ceiling is a modern ceiling was rebuilt after the original style during the time of Philip Luer, the French Egyptologist who restored the area. Uh, originally the ceiling was here to make the shade and let the entry only of the light and air inside the colored hole of the cave. 
Uh, when we walk to look at the column in whole, we can see a space between each two columns. And actually, we believe that this space was used to the himself. One line or one side mirroring the crown of the north, lower Egypt, and on the other side, all right, y'all. So this is the southern tomb, 150 feet. So on the north side, of the pyramid. They usually built this because, just in case that the king would have passed away before the pyramid was finished, they could at least had him right here, like a temporary um, tomb, 150 feet. Yeah, that's the best I can do. But you see that? that look at that, man. That is crazy. I'm good. Founder of the fourth dynasty, and by the way, he is the father of Kyops, the owner of the Great Pyramid of Saqqara. You can see two of his pyramids over there. The one on the left, it's called the Bent. That one, because they wanted to make a complete triangle at the beginning, but they couldn't. At the height, certain height, they found if they continue, the uh, tomb will collapse. So they reduced its angle 10 degrees and it produced for us what is called the bent pyramid and next to it on the right side it's another uh, tomb for the same king Senefru so it seems that he didn't like his parents to run he was upset and he asked his architect to construct another one for him to be real and complete one and a real triangle and he did so and he made the very first real pyramid in Egypt. It's real triangle with its shape and angles and everything. That is the very first real one. The red pyramid of Senefru in the area of the All right, on the side. The temple. All these hieroglyphics. Crazy. It's a coffin. Look at this. We inside of it too. Dang. It's okay, one minute? Yeah. Let's go. Es así antes también todos mm -hmm. figuras portadas y estimados había basta de papel o casca de papel o tal vez algunos mismas. Este vida cotidiana con el pez. Divide it in centimeters squares. Every square centimeter contains 49 dots. Every dot here is represent a knot on this carpet. I mean, every square centimeter contains 49 knots. Which image do you centimeter or inch? Uh, inch. inch? Inch. About this one, 49 knots in every square centimeter. That means in every square inch it contains 300 knots. We have also 400 and 500 knots in every square inch. This is depend on the thickness of this three, thicker or Thinner. Now let's see how this one is making one up here. By the way, this loop, this is consists of two rows, one up and one back. At first, he catches this color, this red, then twist around this back row, insert in the middle, with front one insert in between, and they pull it down, then cut it to make just one knot. One more time again, twist around this back, insert, with front one insert, Pull it down and cut it to make just one knot. So okay, everybody. 
my Kim in Egypt trip is over. I hope you've been watching all of the vlogs I've uploaded to my channel. Please check out part one, two, three, four, and now five. I made it home safe and sound. Just want to say thank Memphis Tours. That was the place we booked to go on a um to go on a tour in Egypt. They did a great job from Cairo to Luxor to Aswan and taking care of us on the cruise at the hotels at the Hilton at the Four Seasons and even with our travel in Egypt you know the flights but the flight getting there was the thing I did not like it was like nine almost ten hours from LAX to Paris three and a half hours four hours from Paris to Cairo so I got long legs. I'm six foot four, so I need a private jet. <laughs> I need to invest in a private jet because ain't no way I can keep doing this traveling across the world like this. So I know myself. Um, if you get a chance, go visit Egypt. Like I said, some people it's on their bucket list. I was actually happy I did this. I was supposed to go to Egypt about 12, 13 years ago on Ashwa Kwesi tour. But at that time, my ex-girlfriend, she broke up with me, which was no problem. And, um, you know, I just postponed it and I actually found other nations in Africa that I wanted to visit as far as like South Africa, Ghana, Kenya, Mozambique, Cameroon, Morocco, Ethiopia. But Egypt was always on the top list. I got it off. I'm very thankful for that. Egypt is like the starting point of my awareness, my consciousness of understanding African history. So if it wasn't for Egypt, Ethiopia, Nubia, Kush, um, Sudan, those those nations, those countries, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So that's the starting point to continue my legacy with my children, grandchildren, lineage. I'm going to be able to educate them, take them to these places so that I can know, do not romanticize, glorify Egypt. You know, you have to understand it's a starting point. Find out what is your field research, what is your purpose, and I'll be able to help my children with that. That's all I care about when I travel is finding my purpose in life and appreciating the world. Malcolm X said, you know, education is a passport. You know, use it wisely. You go around the world, you're going to be educated. You're going to understand the world. you be stuck in your hood, stuck where you at. You'll be stagnated with intelligence. So... Thank y'all again. I'll be going to another country soon. And you know I'll be uploading the vlog on my channel. So until next time, y'all, salute.